Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time that we have here this morning, once again, to open your word and, and uh, to understand the time that we are living in. We pray for each other. We pray for those studying this message. We ask that you can continue to help us um, in our day-to-day -day struggles. We pray for um, those that aren't here, that usually they are. We just pray that your angel care and protection can watch over them. Be with us now through thy spirit, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again. And um, so we've been tediously going through American history and um, trying to understand some of these details. So we spent uh, quite a bit of time yesterday. Uh, figuring out something that should have been fairly simple, and that was the idea that how the Thanksgiving was changed, you know, so it's going to be under Roosevelt, that you're going to have that uh, change in regard to when they move it from the, so if I remember correctly, it's it's the last Thursday originally, because of the Depression, they moved it in uh, 19... 39. They're no. Gonna move, they're going to move it to the next to last Thursday, the penultimate Thursday. And then they're going to do that for three years in a row. And then they're going to change it to the fourth Thursday in November. Right. And that's how it stayed. Correct. Dwight? I believe that's correct. Okay. So that was something that I didn't have straight in my mind before. It took me a while to understand it. I knew that there was a change. I was thinking it was Truman, but it was Roosevelt. So the significance of that, one of the things we saw was uh, these different Thanksgivings and the, the first time that he moved it uh, in 1939 to November 23rd, it happened to be the 11th day of the ninth month on the biblical calendar. So I guess we would say uh, as a symbol, that would be 9-11, September 11th being the ninth month and the 11th day. So we have that symbol there. And then on December 26, 1941, so that's going to be 19 days after Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor's December 7th. Today is the anniversary of Pearl Harbor. So 19 days after that, they make it the fourth Thursday in November. Okay. Was that clear what we did? Here, I can show you this again. This is the document. There we have it. December 26, 1941. So any questions about any of that? Just tying up that loose end to make sure we understand it. So Abraham Lincoln declared Thanksgiving to officially fall on the last Thursday of November. And, and that's how it was celebrated until 1939. And then it moved to the second to the last Thursday, or the next to the last, which is the penultimate Thursday, for three years. And then it moved to the fourth Thursday in November. And it's been that way since December 26, 1941, when it was declared. So that means in 1942, it's going to be uh, the fourth Thursday from then on. Now, the significance of this has to do with these feast days, right? So the idea that, that Heidi and I were addressing back in 2018 was about these feast days. And that's because when we start with November 22nd, 977 BC. It's the 15th day of the eighth month. Now, of course, that's going to be the fourth Thursday in November, right? On the Julian calendar, 977. So it lines up with, if we took the rule that we have today, November 22nd, 977 BC on the Julian calendar would have been Thanksgiving, right? That's, that's the idea. So we could see that that related to Thanksgiving. And that was the case in 2018. So a few days before Thanksgiving in 2018, we suggested that the people there at the School of the Prophets study this, right? And, and the idea is, can we make a prediction about that date? Now, Satan had his hand in it. He, it was perceived as some kind of rebellion or something like that. I have no idea how they got any of that in their heads. Um, but because of that, they didn't want to look at it. And so since we didn't look at it in 2018, other than we had 
they said, you go do it on your own. So we had a study group, Larry Hines there. So he's there as a spy. He's going to report falsely about what was said at that meeting, which I kind of understand how he got that impression. Um, because, you know, we were talking about making a prediction, but it was pretty clear that we were saying, can we make predictions? Is this a mistake, you know, to make this prediction in this way? That was what we weren't, weren't really sure about. You know, can we, can we make predictions about future events? And if we had done that, you know, we probably would have said, I guess we can't. Uh, if we had studied it out and came to the conclusion that this was solid. Now, a year later, November 10th, 2019, Jeff says, this is solid, but we still can't agree about what event had fulfilled the prediction. Even though he says the prediction is valid, he interpreted it as the releasing of the Turkey, symbolizing Islam, Turkey, you know, Ottoman Empire. That's why Turkeys are called Turkey. But I, I associated what happened on the American in Mexican border with, uh, and, and, and it was Clayton who was really opposed to that, believing it was some kind of leftist conspiracy theory. So, which didn't make sense because even if it was, it still would be valid as, um, as a symbol. But anyway, so that's what happened with this. And we still don't know. So we know that we're in the civil war. We can connect all these civil wars. We looked at, uh, Isaiah chapter seven. Uh, we looked at, First Kings chapter 11, 12, and 13. We looked a little bit at the American Revolutionary War. Lots of things in there that we could have looked at, but one of some of the main things had to do with uh, the State Department and um, uh, the SEAL. So we looked at the SEAL last time. And now we would have to start looking at uh, how this connects. Well, and because we have looked at it, how it connects with 1863, Ellen White Civil War visions. So we have all of these symbols, but now when we start to look at this connection to our history, we're taking these Thanksgivings. The primary thing is we have Lincoln and we have Trump connected by 154 years. Right. That 154 years also goes from that first Thanksgiving in 1623 to the first uh, Thanksgiving after, I guess it's going to be the American Revolution in 1777, December 18th. Neither of these are the last Thursday in November, but that 154 years there, we're going to take that and pair it up here from the American Revolution to what's happening between the Civil War in the U.S. in 1863 and that Thanksgiving and the Thanksgiving in 2017, Trump's first Thanksgiving. So what do we think about this? How how are we taking this this connection back to November 22nd, 977 BC? What particularly does it mean? It, it's it's a lot of space of time. You have you know 2,800 years, 29, you know, it's qu quite a lot of time between that November 22nd, 977, and the November 22nd, 2018. Any thoughts on this further? What what should we do with this now, I guess, is the question. Should we try to see if there's some connection to more recently? We did have the Thanksgiving in 2022, the November 24th date, that uh, we connected as 2,688 days to April 5th, 2030. Now, we do have that period of time from 977 to 2018 as 2,000. 994 years. Any significance in that that anybody sees? And if we go to the Thanksgiving, we're going to have, so we're going to have a Thanksgiving again, right? So we're going to have a number of Thanksgivings in the future. So we would have, if we go to uh, Thanksgiving next year, uh, 2024, that's going to be 3,000 years. Is, is that significant? If we take would we somehow connect the four year period? Because we have had spans of four years. What, what should we do with this? I'm just looking at wrapping my head around this 3000 year period. Yeah. So then, yeah. So the next Thanksgiving coming up will be 3000 years since November 22nd, 977. Well, you had in 977 BC, you had the image of the uh, golden calves, two golden yeah. calves. 
and there's a structure there that was, uh, I think, from the flood going back. It was uh, 1,533 years from the flood. And then yes. from the flood, it was 977 years to 1,533. Right. And so, so in 1533, so, in 1533 yeah. there, you got a, you've got the, the one golden calf. And uh, because of that, is it, uh, I, I, my understanding is that there's 3,000 people killed by the Levites or slain. Okay. After that, so you have that 3,000 connected with the 1533 BC. And then there's that structure that takes you to 977 BC. And then you can have three thousand years to twenty twenty four. Okay, and now the and of course that's going to be the Thanksgiving after the election, right? Yeah. So I don't know if there's it's going to be some way you can maybe relate some maybe with golden calves or I'd have to see. I don't know how that would tie in. Okay. Well, that that's actually quite interesting. So yeah, because these golden calves are pretty in, important in nine seventy seven. And now it's going to connect to 1533 by going back to the flood. Now, what's the significance there with the flood? I mean, other than that, it's 1533 years to 977. Is there was there anything else? Because we don't have golden calves at the flood or anything like that. No. Uh, just we have, just the have, the, have the we have the number 300 with the arc, the size of the the arc. So that's like a tenth, of three thousand. Yeah, and we also have the three hundred of the two periods of one hundred and fifty days, right? And so we addressed that before dealing with the three hundred foxes and etc. Was other and Gideon's three hundred, right? So even though the yeah. Bible doesn't explicitly say three hundred, it is a chiasm of the waters prevailing for one hundred and fifty days and then them abating for one hundred and fifty days. So that's three hundred. Okay, so so that would be significant. So if we if we look at what these these golden calves represent, so we're going to take this three thousand years to twenty twenty four. I mean, so technically speaking, I mean you have an election, but you're still going to have the president before he changes office. Uh, He's still officiating at that Thanksgiving, right? So, so Biden would still, if he's alive, um, you know, or if he's, you know, hasn't resigned yet, he would still be the president at that Thanksgiving. It would be his last Thanksgiving, right? Yes. So what do we do with that? How would we? Because we have this north and south, so we're, we're saying it's Republicans and Democrats. There's, you know, we get this back to the Civil War. The Civil War is going on. We have that Civil War Thanksgiving, November 26, 1863. Now, now, when does Lincoln die? What's the date? He's going to die what, April 15, 1865. So he's going to still. He's going to have that extra Thanksgiving. So after he has that Thanksgiving in 1863, he's going to be there at the Thanksgiving in 1864, right? Agreed. Now, I know we spent some time looking at, at Lincoln a little bit, but, you know, he's he's the, the first Republican president. You know, so I don't know what it says about understanding this, this election coming up. Because one of the things when we looked – at this civil wars between the North and the South in Daniel chapter 11, in Greece. Um, we definitely have Biden. We definitely have the Republicans and the Democrats. And we, we have said that um, on one level, January 6th, uh, 2021, is Raffia. And then we have to have a Paneum. At some point, the Republicans defeat the Democrats in some way, or the globalists. So we're not really sure how that's going to happen or what these dates mean in connection with, but at least as symbols, um, the fact that we're going to have the Democrats with this election 3,000 years after 
977, and then it's going to be followed by this Thanksgiving. And and I'm just taking that this Thanksgiving symbol is symbolized by this unofficial feast day, this this one from northern Israel. So it's going to be tied to the Thanksgiving, just to make that clear to people. Um, because it happens to be November 22nd, 977 BC, which would be a Thanksgiving, and it's the 15th day of the eighth month in 977. Uh, then we would attach that to um, to the Thanksgiving as a symbol. Now, in uh, 2024, Thanksgiving is going to be November 21st, and it's going to be the 19th day of the eighth month, right? So it's not going to be the 15th day of the eighth month. So you know, it's it's not it, it's rare to get them to align Thanksgiving and the 15th day of the eighth month, but but back at the beginning, those symbols are tied together. Just so Thanksgiving in our time becomes the symbol of this counterfeit feast day. Doesn't mean it's bad or evil or anything like that. It's just as a symbol, it stands in that way. It relates to 977 in context of these civil wars. Okay. So we're going to get a November 21st, 2024 Thanksgiving. You're not going to get the Thanksgiving on 2020, um, uh, back to 2022 or the 22nd day of November. So, cause because of the leap year, it ended up moving over. So it's going to be a while till you get it to be a Thursday again. So that, that the Thursday is November 22nd. You, you understand what I'm saying? So in 2024, it's going to be like in 2023, it was the 23rd, right? But because there's a leap year in 2024, it doesn't move to 2022. It skips to 2021. Does that make sense to people? Because the leap year. So when you're going to get November 22nd again to be a Thursday, that's not going to happen until 2029. And it's interesting too, that in 2029, it's going to be the 15th day of the eighth month. So that's going to be 3,000 years and and five. So 3,005 years that we get the 15th day of the eighth month lining up with November 22nd. So 3,005 years from 977. Now, of course, we know that when we get into 2029, that that's going to be the Jewish civil year is going to begin on the first day of the seventh month in 2029. And it's going to be that April 5th, 2030, that's going to be in that civil year, right? Now, again, you know, we're not time setters, but we do recognize that we can measure time and put dates in the future, even if we don't know what they mean. So we could say from a symbolic point of view, that in that Jewish year that begins in on the first day of the seventh month in, um, and that's going to be, um, October 10th, which is a symbol of the 10th day of the 10th month, which is a symbol of the siege. Right. So that, that's 2029 in that month or in that year that starts on that first day of the seventh month, that's going to be the year in which we have the symbolic date of April 5th, 2030. So maybe it's significant that the 15th day of the eighth month in that year is November 22nd, which is also a Thursday. So it's a Thanksgiving. They line up there. Any thoughts about that? There was also a hand I had sent a, a message or a comment, but I went to Aaron's uh, website rather than yours. Uh, just about 350 years from 977 to 627 with the prophecy of Josiah being fulfilled. And that year the, it was again the 22nd of November and it was the 15th day of the 8th month in that year. Oh, okay, okay then, so that's interesting. Okay, so just slow down because you're going too fast for me. I'm just going to bring this up so people can see this. So when we go to 
977 BC, and we go to, we have to go to the Julian calendar here. So that's going to be the 15th day of the eighth month, and it's November 22nd. It's a Saturday, but so it's not a Thursday, but still it's that symbol, right, of Thanksgiving. So I, I said it was like the last Thursday, but it's a symbol of that, right, even though it's not a Thursday. Okay, so then we're going to go to 627, right? Yes. And that's going to be uh, the 350 years. Yes. So that's the fulfillment, the year in which the prophecy of Josiah is fulfilled. Now, we don't know the exact date in which this occurs, but but it would be in 627, and so sometime in 627. But in 627, November 22nd on the Julian lines up with the 15th day of the eighth month on the biblical calendar. Yes, and right. from then, from then is 39 years, one month, and 15 inclusive days until the beginning of the siege, 587. As well, so that was what? Okay, so that attaches to the 10th day of the 10th month symbol. Yes. Right. Yeah, so it's going to be 39 years, so you would subtract... Um, so we're going to go to, uh, so if I go to 39, that'd be 588. And then I have to go how many months? One month. One month. And then 15 days. So 15 days. And that's going to be inclusive. So I just cardinal 14 days. And that brings me to the 10th day of the 10th month. So that's really interesting. Right, because it gives me that symbol attached there. So if we think about the siege, um, you know, so we have that symbol of the siege that, that shows up lots of different places, the 10th day of the 10th month, either on our calendar or on the biblical calendar. Uh, so that's October 10th. So remember that when that year begins in 2029, right, you're going to have that uh, that new year on the first day of the seventh month, it's going to be October 10th, which is a symbol of the 10th day of the 10th month, right? So you have uh, the 10th day of the 10th month showing up as the symbol here as well. Okay, so so that's interesting. Yes, and also uh, another point, with 977, you've got 350 years going from that point and then from the flood, you got 977 years to 1533 with the, the one calf. Yeah. The golden calf. But you also have a period of 350 years as well from, from that point in that Noah is going to live a further 350 years. So I can maybe uh, put a diagram in the chat just to Okay. Okay. So put a diagram in there. Okay. And then we can, we can, we can actually open that up and look at it. Um, when you get it in there. So you got the diagram. You're going to send it there in the chat. I haven't done it yet. I just, it's just, I just realized that because I already had noticed the 120 years because you got 120 years the ARP being built, uh, before, uh, yeah. Before the flood, and then you got 120 years, the, the reigns of Solomon, David, and Saul. Yeah, which means yeah. So you got 120, and then they're, that's going to be followed by 350. In each case, you got a 350. Then following that, one relating mm -hmm. to the death of Noah, one. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So if you can get that diagram together, I mean, then we can, we can share it. So now then how does that relate to, you know, 2029, for instance? Um, so when we're dealing with this on, on our line, so we got this November 22, 2029. We're saying that is going to be 3,000 and Five years, 
Now it has the symbols of 350 in there, right? Well, you have five years. Prior to the flood, you have Lamech dying, age 777. Okay. So you can go down 3,000 years and then have another five to 2029. Okay. Okay. That, that's, that makes sense. Now, of course, the flood is in the year 2390, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it starts in the fall of 2391, but most of the flood is in the year 2390. So that's how we always take it as a symbol and just trying to see the number of years there. So I don't, I don't know where we would count. You know, if we count from the flood, it's, uh, to 2030, it's 44,019 years. I don't know if that means anything. If we go to, from the prophecy of 120 years, it's 4,539. I know there's something about that. Anyway, so I don't, I don't know what that means other than we, we can, we can connect this. So we can just say that this goes back and connects all of that history. Now, now, how does the flood connect as a symbol in other places? So obviously we know the world's not going to be destroyed by a flood again. But what does the flood come to symbolize? The language of the flood is used for what? Well, it's uh, an executive judgment upon the world. Okay. So an executive judgment. And, and it's used when God is having the enemies come in, for instance, in Isaiah chapter 8. It's going to use the illustration of Assyria coming in, conquering northern Israel, and then coming into Judah as a flood, right? It comes up just to the neck for Judah, even though it overwhelms Israel. We also have it as a symbol of the Sunday law as well. And, you know, again, we're not making predictions about these symbolic dates. I mean, there may be events that happen on them that are connected in some ways with prophecy. But at this point, we're just using them as symbols. So after they have passed, we might find some significance in these various states. So when we look at what's coming with the election, so we've had lots of speculations in lots of different directions over the last few years about, you know, what's going to happen with the American elections. You know, it's sort of, uh, it's like trying to figure out the weather here in Alberta. The predictions change constantly, what's going to happen. But one thing we do know is that we're going to have, presumably, at least we think we know it, we're going to have an election coming up in 2024, and then we're going to have a new president, almost ass assuredly, in 2025, whether a Republican or a Democrat. So on January 20th, 2025, and then the next time that you're going to get a new president is going to be uh, in January of 2029, right? So four years later, you're going to have either a new president or the same president who was elected um, as president again, right? So we know that time is short. We know that Christ is coming back soon. We're not sure how all of these elections are going to play out and exactly what they mean. But one thing we can say is that the world is approaching a crisis, which we understand as Seventh-day Adventists is the Sunday law. And there's differences about how we understand this. And what we have done is we've gone back to Millerite history. And we say the Millerites uh, made predictions and their predictions failed, but it was still in God's providence. They made those predictions. And in, Early writings, page 74, you can see, you know, six years after, uh, or seven years after, right, depending which way you're looking at it, um, but 16 years after 1844 and 1850, they're making a prediction about what's going to happen in 1851. People are predicting that uh, it's going to be seven years from 1844. Joseph Bates is one of those. You have people like... Um, Sister Minor, who's going back to old Jerusalem, and she's also involved in the prediction uh, that's going to happen for uh, uh, 1851. 
right? So they're saying in November of 1851, Christ is going to return. A lot of this has to do with misunderstanding how the biblical calendar works as well, which is why they have in November. I'm not really sure exactly how they were figuring these things out. They don't really make much sense. But anyway, so what we have is parallels to that in our movement. That is, we want what we predicted to come to pass so that we can be assured of, of understanding prophecy. And we know now that it's not as simple as that, right? Can't just, and we can't just uh, uh, predict events and we can't go back and, and say, well, it's just things are delayed, right? We are in a tearing time and things are delayed, but how those things are going to unfold, we don't know. So, so this should give us some indication that we have this connection with the past and that there's this preparation time in order to give a message to the church. And we still don't particularly know what the message is, how it's going to look, what form it's going to take, or who's going to be involved in that. So my personal struggle you know, has always been trying to figure out what is my responsibility at present. And right now, all that's been put before me, and, and I believe before all of us, is that we need to study, right? That's what we're doing. We're studying God's word. We're trying to understand it. We're looking for light. We're in the tarrying time. God is giving us light. And at some point, all of this will come together, right? We'll have a clear-cut message to give. And um, so we just have to wait on God for that, right? But now we, we have this study. So we're studying Daniel chapter 11. That's what we're studying. We've looked at the civil wars. We can see that we are in the midst of a civil war. And, and we have these feast days, these thanksgivings. They're symbols. So I would think we would have to take 2029. And say that as a symbol, we have a parallel to 977 BC. It, it brings us back to there. Now it also brings us back to the flood, right? So we, so we have this flood. So how do we, so, so we could, we, we would attach to that the symbols of the Sunday law. And it's just saying that I'm not saying that on November 22nd, 2029, we're going to have the Sunday law, but it's bringing us into the Sunday law history. So we know we're in the time of the Sunday law ever since 9-11, at least, right? And, and all of those symbols are showing us that we're in that time and that the history that we're going through presently within this movement is typifying what's going to happen. So... So I think we would have to take this date here. Um, now, what Stephen has done, he's, he's connected it with the prophecy of Josiah. Now, the prophecy of Josiah was instrumental in understanding um, the reason for the 390 years and the 40 years in Ezekiel uh, chapter 4. And Ezekiel chapter 4 is what gave us July 18, 2020, before we had it from Revelation 9. Right? So when we were looking at, um, so I'm going to I'm going to go here and just review some of this so that people will understand what I'm talking about. So this had to go back with Ezekiel, right? So it was the book of Ezekiel. The prophecies of Ezekiel back in 2016, we had connected the prophecy of Josiah with Ezekiel. So prior to that, we hadn't. I'm just trying to find these charts. Can we find them here? That's not it. So back in 2018, we were studying Samuel Snow's letters. Uh, 2017, pardon me. And then in 2018, we started connecting um, this prophecy of Ezekiel. So this is it. So this is back in 2018, um, in the beginning of November, like November 5th or something like that. Um, so these are my 
my charts. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, don't know what this is. It's like these are working charts. But anyway, you have here this center chart. So I'll zoom into this one. This is Ezekiel lying on his left side and his right side. So I was presenting this in the morning class. And uh, Brittany and her family had a really hard time understanding why it's not 430 years, right? So I said, he lies on his left side for 390 days. He's going to finish on the 10th day of the fifth month. And then he's going to lie on his right side on August 15th. And uh, he's going to lie there for 40 days, right? So I don't know if these dates are right because I've worked on some of the, whether it's September 21st, 21st day of the sixth month. Anyway. So you're going to have these 40 days. So you got the 40 days and, and you have uh, the 390 days. And they say, well, it should be 430 days, right? But the point is he's looking at the, the mock-up of the siege of Jerusalem, first line on his left side and his right side. And in both cases, they're pointing to the siege, right? That's what he's predicting. He's predicting the siege. OK, now you can see that the date that, that they're pointing to is the 10th day of the fifth month on the one hand, uh, which is going to be the day that the temple is destroyed. And on the other hand, pointing to August 15th, which is the midnight cry. Now, we know that he's going to have his. Um, uh his third vision, Ezekiel 20, verse 1, on the 10th day of the fifth month, and that um, uh, the temple is going to be destroyed, and I have here August 17th, it should be August, or August 18th, it should be August 17th, 586 BC, that the temple is destroyed. Um, so you can see these 10th days of the 10th month. And then we had August 7th, uh, or August 6th, it should be the 10th day of the fifth month in 70 AD. Right, so these are full charts. And then we, we said that, um, um, that this date, August 6th, 70 AD, uh, this is predicted by Ezekiel. So Ezekiel is predicting not just the destruction of the temple on, um, in 586, but also the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. And from that, when I did the presentation, um, we, we came to recognize that we could take this 10th day of the fifth month from Ezekiel and we could connect it to the 10th day of the fifth month in 2020. That is, that was what was coming. And, and so that is how we arrived at, uh, July 18th because the 10th day of the fifth month in 2020 is July 18th. And then we use Josiah Lich's prophecy. Now, when we did it, um, and I, I should have a chart of this somewhere, so I'm just going to flip through these. These were, uh, there's the week of Christ, all these different charts. There should be the chart that I used. I don't see it here. I might not have drawn the chart out because I drew it out on the whiteboard back in 2018. So these look like older charts. Yeah, so we used the 391 and a half days. I'm just trying to find this out. So anyway, if you count 391 and a half days, um, you can end up with July 18th from Ezekiel. Is this it? Um, ah, so this is, this is the one from Josiah Lich's prophecy. Uh, this is from Ezekiel's, but you can see I don't have 2020 in here, but I should have. How did I do that? Again, I just have the chart like this. Should be the parallel charts. Okay. Yes, there we go. So if we count from June 22nd, October, so we got this 391 and a half days. The 391 and a half days to bring us to July 18th, 1845. Um, anyway, the idea is 
that we used Ezekiel's uh, chart and Samuel Snow's letters to arrive at July 18, uh, 2020 on the Julian calendar. So that's what we're going to use here. Um, yeah, so that was the 391 and a half days. We could connect that. There's lots of charts. I really need to clean these charts up. There's lots of stuff here. It's really confusing. So again, you see he, Ezekiel's literary, literal 390 and 40 days. Um, but what you don't see is me putting that uh, July 18, 2020. Other than this, so we're going to use Samuel Snow's letters. This is basically the one. So we, we ended up coming to July 18, 2020 by going to June 22nd, 2019. That symbol there. Um, this is Samuel Snow's letters, right? So in Samuel Snow's letters, this is going to be June 22nd, 1844. And then we count 391 and a half, we get to July 18. And then we use Josiah Lich's prophecy. So I go through all this. Um, what is it I'm trying to explain? So what was it I was explaining? Anybody remember now why, why I wanted to talk about this? Oh, going back to Ezekiel. So we have the prophecy of Josiah, right? So in 627, we have um, that prophecy fulfilled. But you're also going to have it attached to 622. This is Odilio's work a bit, you know, dealing with 622 and 627. So they represent June 27th and June 22nd. Um, uh, there's lots of different different connections between June 27th and June 22nd. It has to do with uh, Samuel Snow's Pentecost letter that's written on June 22nd and published June 27th. All right, and there's a little uh, puzzle there. Uh, that's interesting. So the point is the 350. How, how are we connecting this? What is it that we're trying to understand about this um, this civil war? It relates to the civil war. It relates to the feast days. It relates to the prophecy of Josiah. So Stephen, you were saying that we have we have 350 years. And we have 350 years uh, that Noah is that that Noah lives after the flood. I believe that's correct. Okay, so we got that 350 years. Um, so I'm just trying to remember what this connection is again. So July 18, 2020, and then we're going to have um, that failed prediction. So that's going to parallel with October 22nd. Uh, so we get to Early writings, page 74. We have people making predictions, but we know that we had the correct date. But the, And the correct date was that we can co connect that correct date back to this chronology in 977, right? That's the basic idea is that the prophecy of Josiah is the key that unlocks July 18th. And it's still guiding us, right? Because the prophecy of Josiah leads us to Millerite history. So everything that we've done has been based upon understanding Millerite history correctly. Correct? Correct. If we're right about Millerite history and our application of it, we can see that we are repeating Millerite history. And so we have had since July 18th that we're paralleling with October 22 as a symbol, as in a typical line. But this movement has been repeating Millerite history. And so we know that these predictions that are being made are really just of the character of that were being made within those that accepted October 22. Um, that those are being repeated as mistakes within this movement and that we should have learned from the past. If we're repeating Millerite history, 
we should just look at Millerite history and say, we shouldn't be doing this, right? And it's just like Jeff writing again. If we look at that, at Millerite history, we should say, well, if Jeff is Miller, then him writing again is simply repeating what Miller did, right? Correct. Okay. Now, now Miller is going to write an apology and a defense. Um, when is when is that published? Does anybody know? So we have this apology and defense of Miller, right? So he's going to to write this out. It, it's in the Three Angels Messages source book, which I'm just going to quickly open here. Um, is that August one? Yeah, it's August 1st, uh, 1845, right? So it's going to be um, just less than a year after the midnight cry in 1844. <clears throat> now, can we attach anything that, that Jeff did when he started writing again uh, to that? So th is there any significance of what Jeff is doing and what um, Miller did. So I'm just opening up this uh, Three Angels Messages source book. That's what I'm looking at. So his apology and defense. Yeah, so that's going to be August 1st, uh, 1845. And well, that's interesting that it's the 26th day of the fourth month. Okay, so that is interesting. Um, so being the 26th day of the fourth month, that's going to tie to the symbol of Josiah Lich's prophecy. Okay, so I'm just going to go there. Um, yeah, so it's the 26th day of the fourth month. Now, Jeff is going to begin... Uh, publishing again, you know, with his letters on uh, July 29th. So that's obviously a couple of days off from August 1st uh, in 2023. And you said he's publishing that what? What three day? Days, uh, July 29th. That's three days difference than August 1st, right? So three days on the calendar before Miller. So you're going to have... That's going to be 65,010 days after Miller's apology and defense. So that's 2,167 months, prophetic months, which is 11 times 197. So I don't know if that means anything or not, but that's the span of time between, between those dates. That's 178 years apart. So that's obviously the digits of 187. Yep. Yeah. And, and you know, 187 plus 178 is 365. So from the autumnal equinox to the spring equinox is 178 days. From the spring to the fall is 187. Now, of course, that's the last day of our camp meeting, right? So Jeff right. is going to publish that on the last day of our, the last Sabbath of our camp meeting, right? We're going to still have some meetings on Sunday, but the Sabbath, he's going to publish that, that first article. And um, so definitely we have all of these, these symbols. I don't know exactly how to, to put it all together. That's what we have. So if we take this sort of apology and defense, because that's kind of what we would call um, what Jeff is doing. I mean, it's, it's paralleling what Miller's doing. Now, Miller's going to be doing other things. So um, that's going to be his first major writing after October 22nd. Um, and in this apology and defense, I'm going to go there. So he says, on the passing of my published time, I frankly acknowledge my disappointment in reference to the exact period, but my faith was unchanged 
in any essential feature. I therefore continued my labors, principally at the West during the summer of 44, until the seventh month movement, as it is called. So he's talking here about his, his own prediction of the spring of 1844, right? I had no participation in this, only I, as I wrote a letter 18 months previously, presenting the observances under the Mosaic Law, which pointed to the month as a probable time when the advent might be expected. This was written by because some were looking to definite days in the spring. I, I had, however, no expectation that so unwarranted a use would be made of those types. So he's saying that the use that was made of those types was unwarranted, correct? Is this parallel to what Jeff has been saying? It would look to be. Yeah. That any should regard a belief in such mere inferential evidence to test of salvation. I therefore had no fellowship with that movement until about two or three weeks previous to the 22nd of October, when, seeing it had obtained such prevalence and considering it was a probable point of time, I was persuaded that I was, that it was a work of God and felt that if it should pass by, I should be more disappointed than I was in my first published time. Some are disposed to lay a stress on the seventh month movement, which is not warranted by the word. There was then a dedication of heart, a view of the Lord's coming that was well pleasing in the sight of God, desire for the Lord's coming and a preparation for that event of acceptability. But because we then ardently desired his coming and sought that preparation that was necessary, it does not follow that our expectations were then realized, for we were certainly disappointed. We expected the personal coming of Christ at that time, and now to contend that we were not mistaken is dishonest. We should never be ashamed, frankly, to confess all our errors. Have we heard anything, not just from Jeff, but from others similar to that with July 18th? Well, there have been a lot of people that that are trying to say that all of these things that we've been going through have been an error. You're right. Now, Jeff is going to basically go back to 2012 and say, well, you know, once other people, because in a sense, in 2000, after 2012, we start to have all of this light coming from other people that we never had before, right? You're going to have Emiliano with the Ezra 7 9. Uh, you're going to have um, the, the light that's coming from chronology. Jeff is not actually creating a, this light, right? He's picking up light from others. And what he sort of expressed in these letters is that um, the mistake was listening to other voices, that he is the prophet, he should have just been presenting what he presented, he shouldn't have listened to any voice, right? That's what he's been saying in these articles. That's what it seems to be, yes. Right. So, so, So his mistake was listening to others, Others had these mistakes. He should have taken up his responsibility as being God's appointed messenger and just, we should have just followed him, right? Um, so, and, and I wouldn't have joined the movement if it was following a man, right? So I was only interested in following, uh, what God's word said. So, you know, the thing I liked about the movement is that that light was coming from lots of different places. So he says, I have no confidence in any of the new theories that grew out of that movement, namely that Christ then came as the bridegroom, that the door of mercy was closed, that there was no salvation for sinners, that the seventh trumpet then sounded, or that it was a fulfillment of prophecy in any sense, right? The spirit of fanaticism, which resulted from it in some places leading to extravagance and excess, I regard as the same nature as that which retarded the Reformation in Germany in the same as have been connected with every religious movement since the first advent. The truth is not response, responsible for such devices of Satan to destroy it, and I have never taught a neglect of any of the duties of life which make us good parents, children, neighbors, or citizens. And I have never inculcated a faithful performance of all those duties in joining good works with faith and repentance. Those who have taught the neglect of these, instead of acting with me or being my followers, as they are called, have departed from my counsels and acted in opposition to my uniform teachings. Men have crept in unawares who have given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, 
teaching lies and hypocrisy, denying any personal existence of Christ, forbidding to marry, etc. So what Jeff has done in, is similar to what Miller has done here. He's heard of extremes and just has attached all of this as fanaticism. Right? Okay. So, so, so this is the problem that no, Miller's not lost, right? We know that. Well, I mean, if, if if he was, then why is why are angels of the Almighty guarding his grave? Right. Yeah. So, so, and I believe that the parallel there with Miller and Jeff still stands. That Jeff, because of other people's reports. He doesn't know really what's going on in the movement, right? He's still getting a twisted representation of things. Correct. And, and, and I still remember when I had, uh, you know, Chuck do a presentation because I felt that the best way to deal with Chuck was to just give him a voice and then address his points in a dispassionate manner, right? Because he was he was there at the meetings. Um, uh, but that was interpreted by others as if we were following Chuck or something like that. And then, um, and, and Jeff made a statement saying something. Now I know where fanaticism is going to come from in this movement, which was really referring to me. Right. So there's been this bias towards me as a person that Jeff has heard. And, and Jeff has not been following what we're doing because of that bias. I believe if Jeff had, had spent the time studying with us all through this time, um, or at least just following what we were doing, he would have a much different view of what's happening in the movement and a much different idea about the various personalities and characters in the movement. Right. But his his perspective has been so colored that it's it would be impossible for him, unless it was divine intervention, uh, to see anything different, right? So, so I understand, sympathize with Jeff and what he's going through, but it is repeating what Miller did. So he, he's just going to go back to what he believed before. Now, I did find one place on the internet, one um, Adventist writer who claims that this letter, even though it's published August 1st, 1845, was actually written on July 18th, 1845. But I haven't been able to confirm it by a, another source. So I, I'm not sure why, um, where he got this from. And, it, and it's a major Adventist writer. I can't, I can't remember who it was, uh, but says it was you know, July 18th that this was written. Um, but here it's going to be published on August 1st, 1845. And as, as you noted, uh, this is the 26th day of the fourth month. Okay. Dwayne. So, so we're in this time. We're in this time in which we have to study for ourselves. We know that God has been leading us. Uh, we can't deny his leading. If we do, uh, that would be an error. And then Stephen has got his chart together for us. Um, so I'm going to show this chart here. Let's go there. Okay, so we have... Uh, 1533 and 977 date span correlation linked with the 120 and the 350. So we can see the first time that there's a prophecy given, and that's going to be uh, 510 BC, 120 years to the flood, 2390, then 350 years to the death of Noah. And then if we go from the first time the prophecy is given to the Exodus, yeah, I just realized the mistake. Yeah, that was the mistake you made. Yeah, because I was trying to do the math in my head and it didn't add up. Um, so 3,000 should be 
I was like, I, I should have like a, I'll do it again. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It should be, the 3000 should be sort of from 977 rather than 627. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so let's see here. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So that's going to be from 977. Yeah. So you got to do that. Okay. So he just deleted that, I guess, because it disappeared. <laughs> He's going to fix that. So we'll come back to that again. It'll be up presently. So, so the idea that we have here is we have a, um, a connection to this past history that connects us to, um, 2024 with 3000. And then we have the five. So the five connects us to 2029. So we have the November 22nd as being the 15th day of the eighth month on the Gregorian, just as we had it November 22nd uh, on the Julian as being the 15th day of the eighth month in 977. So we have that um, period of 3,000 years and five, so 3,005. Okay, um, till he gets that up. Back up here. Now there was other things that I have been looking at. Um, but it's kind of, it is kind of shocking to see how, uh, our current history is almost in lockstep with what was going on in the Millerite history. Yes. Yeah. Well, I know. I mean, and that's the, that's the thing that's, uh, you know, uh, the thing that Colin said is he says, you know, you, you'd be tempted to almost make that parallel, you know, especially with like Jeff B. Miller. Um, but he doesn't explain why it's not correct. <laughs> why, why, if it's not just tempting, that would be the obvious thing that you would see because right. we know reading Millerite history. Um, so here is the corrected chart. So we're going to see, um, the 977 years to 1533. So 3000 are slain. The fellow of that people that day, about 3000 of the people that day, about 3000 men. Exodus 32, 28. And you have the golden calf, right? And then in 977 BC, you have the two golden calves. Now you're going to have the prophecy of Josiah, right? Um, given on the 15th day of the 8th month, November 22nd. Now, there's going to be 3,000 years to, and for some reason we don't got a, a date there, um, but we would have the Thanksgiving there in 2024. Um, and we also could add to this the five years to November 22nd, 2029, so the 3,000 plus the five. And then you got the 350 years, right? So the 350 years of the prophecy of Josiah, that's paralleled. You got the 120 years of the United Kingdom, 350. You got the 120 and the 350 at the beginning there with those. So it's just that 3,000 years and then the five years. Okay, but look, yeah. look at what we've got here as well. You've got this showing as being the 15th day of the eighth month. Yeah. In both 977 and 627. Well, in 627, we don't know when the prophecy is fulfilled, exactly what date. The reason why he puts those dates there is it is that November 22nd is also the 15th day of the eighth month in 627. So that, that, that only happens once every, you know, on average 30 years, right? that you're going to have the Julian date line up with that particular biblical date. So so that's why he just says in that year, 350 years later, exactly to the day, the biblical and 
the Julian calendars line up. Okay. Okay. So, but we've also, as we're looking at this, on the prophecy of Josiah, where the kingdom is divided. Yeah. So, this is a kingdom that is no longer in league. It's no longer unified, right? Yeah. Now, several times I've asked the question, is there going to be anything important for us to recognize regarding August 15th of 2024? August 15th of 2024 Mm -hmm. is the 490th anniversary of the founding of the Jesuits. Yeah. Where right now the corporate church is very much in league with them. Yeah, it's also the 180th year from the midnight cry. Yes. So, is it possible that August 15th is being pointed toward? Okay, so as a symbol, I would say yes. We we don't know, because we have lots of dates in the future. Nothing happens. Of course. So so we're we're not predicting anything on that date. But, you know, we might be able to look back at it and see that there was something that was significant that occurred that gives us light. Because the idea is you you measure the time, and after the time has passed, you see that it was the time, right? That's from Esdras, the book of Esdras. Um, um, and uh can't remember the passage name. But, but the idea is that we're measuring this time not so that we can predict events, but so that after the time has passed, we can see how God is leading, right? So there's nothing wrong with putting that date there. It's a significant date, right? You're saying it's 440 years? 490 years. 90 years, pardon me, yeah. So so that's a significant symbol. And so is 180. Yes. Right? So you've got these two symbols, two periods of time coming together. What it's going to mean, I don't know, right? But it's it's August fifteenth. It's it's that symbol. Now, and 120 years since the Nashville Vision. Okay, 120 years since the Nashville Vision, because that's also going to have happen on August fifteenth. You're saying no. That's going to happen on a different date, but but you're it's just saying for first of July. Yeah, it's the first of July. Yeah. Okay. So it's not. What's that? Yeah, about 46 days prior. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, so about 46 days uh, difference. Okay. But yeah, it's still 120 years from then. But we have the 180. And the 180 we used uh, when we um, went to Josiah Lich's prophecy. We counted 180 to get to 2020 from 1840 to 2020. Um, so anyway, we know that these things mean something. Specifically what they mean, we don't know. Right? We don't, we're not sure how this is going to, because we're not predicting. We're not time setters. But we can measure dates. We can see that there's a significance. So on this chart, you know, we would end up putting uh, Thanksgiving in 2024, and then we would put five years to the Thanksgiving in 2029. So that's what I would do, just to finish off this chart. Okay, so you get, with the 3,005 years, you get the same symbol as 35, three and a five. Okay, so thanks for that, Stephen. And uh, so let's close in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study here. We just ask for your continued presence throughout this day. We pray um, 
that you can bless each person who's studying these things, and that you can help us in our day-to-day walk. Uh, we pray for the meetings coming up tomorrow evening and, and Sabbath. Just ask that you can continue to lead and guide in Jesus' name.